Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Hello everybody, how is everyone today? I've just got me headphones in to listen, to see if I can hear myself, and I can. So I have a feeling we're going to be fine today. Um, how's everyone today? Uh, sorry, it's place is still a little bit of a mess. Um, I've still got my coffee, I've still got my drink. I said we're going to be early, but we're not prepared again, are we? Um, how is everyone today? Um, I just want to make sure that you can all hear me and more importantly, can you hear Louise? Can you hear me? This computer says 10.25. It does say 10.25, yes. Why is that then? I think we're going to need to change the battery in it on the motherboard. <laughs> all right, okay. Because it reverts back, I noticed that as mm. well. Everyone can hear. How does the sound Sound. Sound, yes. <laughs> How does the sound sound? Does the sound sound better? Sounds great. Quality today. Okay. Well, this is the thing. We want to Thank have a guys. quick chat before we start. And can you hear Louise as well? Let's make sure you can hear. Am I under the sea today or am I normal? Because you're oh. normally normal and I'm the one who's... Oh, 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 hello, mermaid. <laughs> it's just how you talk. It's how I talk. Thank you very much for that. Um, <laughs> We're trying something a little bit different. We've changed the cameras around. Um, what is saying you're louder, Lou? Andy's a little quiet. I'm quiet. Well, I'm normally quiet. Aren't That's I? just natural. That's just natural. Mm. But, but I have the ability right by the side of me here to increase my microphone a little bit. So my microphone can come a little bit louder. And I've got my headphones so I can listen to things. One moment, please. Well, what ACDC coming out of there now, is there? How does that sound? White snake. Am I on? Am I on? I'm on <laughs> headphones. I'm on mute. I'm on mute. That's better. I can hear myself now. Can you talk, Louise? Ah, yes, I can talk. Good. She can talk as well. Yes, yes, yes. So that's good. So I'm hoping that you can all hear, which is good. Um, but uh, sounds a bit muffled to be. Oh, Claire, come on. We're doing our best for the sound. She's just saying what oh. she thinks you've asked everybody. <laughs> Don't sulk when they tell you the truth. <laughs> We shouldn't be my folder. Where, where's my mic? My microphone's by here. So my microphone, thing, it could fingers be, crossed. Yeah. I always get confused because they point downwards. But They point downwards because... That's just ours. No, it stops them going p, and, and you hear the, the sound hitting the microphone. Are they supposed to point downwards? Yes. Or if you just made them point downwards? Because no, that would explain a lot. They're supposed to sound. Okay. Oh, see, Louise is clearer than me that's now. Just, that's just my enunciation, <laughs> darling. <laughs> that's the, just the way you speak. Good. Uh, no water noise, great. Do you need to tune yourself up a little bit then? I, I don't need to tune myself a bit more. I don't know, try that. Is, is, are, are we about right? Or can we hear 100% better than last week? Yes. Brilliant. Yeah, we need to talk about last week. Yes, we're going to talk. So, so can you hear crisps? Is that crisp sound? Crisp you can sound. Hear both. Brilliant. Good, Thank SP. You. Thank you. So we've, we've had to change things around. We had, a, we had a disastrous workshop last week. No, no, no. I don't think it was disastrous. Because a lot of people in enjoyed left it. And Louis in the right. There. Is that good? Or should I be, be the other way around? So Louise, doesn't matter which way you are, does it really? I don't think so, no. Depends which one you want to hear most of, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> could, could differ from Perhaps, perhaps we can make them mono. And then yeah. we'd have them. Yes, and dip a bit. Okay. okay. Yeah, but last week, okay, how's that? I don't think that it better? was a disaster because people have been sending me fabulous photos of the things they've done oh. since the Sandcasting Workshop. Yes. Um, and a few people have sent photos because they've had the confidence to just have a go. Which is the main thing. Which is amazing, what it's isn't all it? about. But yes. we were disappointed. We were getting really frustrated throughout the whole workshop with the quality of the sound and the quality of the, um, the picture, which was just pixelated and it, it was driving me nuts. But there wasn't anything we could do short of stopping and starting again and wasting but, time. But then so there may not have been a chance to work to then either. Well, there's that as well. Mm. But so, yeah, we kind of ploughed on thinking that the recording would be... Perfect, because they always are. Aren't, well, say always. Well, you should never assume, but um, every recording we've never had we a have made. We with. But anyway, the next day you looked at the recording and you were just. I thought you were going to cry. I, I could have cried. I absolutely could have cried. It was just. It was no better really than no. the than the live. So we were like, oh my god, what are we going to do? And like, we did work really hard on it, and mm. not asking for sympathy, of course, because it's. Um, we don't know what don't know what's happened. Anyway, obviously it's resolved now, when we're back to a clear picture. Yes. Um, but the upshot is we're going to um, publish the workshop. Yes. The quality's not amazing. It's shocking. Um, but there's still, you can still get the information, you can still 
follow it if you don't mind it being a bit fuzzy mm. and we're just mortified by it and just really really sorry about it all really aren't we yes. about the, the oh, quality yeah. and i'm gutted because the content was brilliant yes. um oh thank you westy um enjoyed it anyway um so anyway that's the really bad news but the really really good news is we're going to do an extra workshop it's not going to be quite three hours long it'd probably be like two two Trials. and a half at the yeah. most yeah. um we're going to do another one live and recorded um which will be av available later um but it's going to be waffle free <laughs> and it's going to be just straight to the good stuff so we're going to just dive straight into casting yes sand casting so we're going to do some more examples of sand casting so just the really exciting good bits just the practical bits yes. um in um, another two hour workshop so if you're a full member you'll get access to it obviously if you've paid for your ticket we'll send you the link to that as well so if you've paid and you feel a bit miffed by the fact that the quality's not great because i would be yeah i mean as well yeah, uh, yeah so um so yeah you, you get to watch more yes so more casting yeah more sand casting as louise said we're not going to have the waffle about tools and equipment that sort of thing we're just going to get straight in with it and we're going to do some casting we're going to do the same casting as what we did last time so you can see what was going on and again, what we need to do, so forth. But what also what we have asked you now, uh, Louise sent out a letter, a new little newsletter, an email this morning, mm -hmm. I think that was, uh, explaining the situation and explaining what we're gonna be doing. But now we want your help in perhaps casting scenarios. Perhaps you are trying to cast um, a button and you can't get it right or you've got an idea of casting a twig and you want to, us to show you how to do that. So this is the reason why we're not going to go through all the tools and equipment. We're just going to concentrate on casting and as Louise says, it's going to be about between two, two and a half hours. So we're going to put a little bit extra content into it and to have something different. So what we want you guys to do is to let us know what you want us to show you next Monday. All right, so this is the email address, and I shouldn't, I, well, I couldn't have been a teacher because my writing gets smaller and it gets <laughs> slanted and it goes down. And it says louise at andrewberry.co.uk. So if you want us to, to, to show you how to cast certain things, you've got a problem, contact Louise and we will include it in next week's workshop, won't we? Yes, absolutely. So yeah, that's, um, that's good. So yeah, we're not happy about last week. We're really upset, but hopefully um, that's some way towards redeeming ourselves. <laughs> Yes, yeah. and, and so next week, again, it's going to be recorded. We, we, we spent a few days checking on the recordings. We've changed the inputs to the mics. So we're not relying upon the microphones added on top of the cameras the directly into the switcher. So we've got a little bit more control. We can up and down from here. Um, so fingers crossed the sound's going to be better because everyone's complained about the sound. And we've tried so much. we tried so many little tweaks, but the sound has never been perfect. So hopefully now... The sound is going to be brilliant mm -hmm. um, and the picture we're making sure that we are recording every single camera separately and that's recording at the highest recording and we've double checked that as well we're double checking that again today just to make sure that that is working they've got a little disc by here uh, so fingers crossed yes Lynn. yep uh, Stacey wants to cast one of her little granddaughter's plastic figurines like a um, plastic kitty or a horse what sort of size are you thinking Stacy, like yeah. a like an um, you know, like the little plastic soldiers. Is it that sort of, well, like a Polly Pocket? Don't know. Something like Send that. Send us a picture. Send us a picture. Yep. Um, Squarefish, Phyllis. I'm curious about casting a twig. A few people have said a twig, mm. but that's on at the bench, isn't it? It is. So can we cast a twig next week, or yeah, should we just can. Yeah, yeah. cast a twig? Yeah. Or yeah, we'll cast. Should a twig. we just make the the twig video open? We'll see if we've get a lot of people and a lot of a lot of people have said projects. A if, twig. Yeah, if, if, we, if, if, but you've already made the film, so we might as well just make that available to everyone. We'll see. Mm. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I did try. If there's a lot of content and everyone wants to see the twig, there's not much point in doing the twig again. I'd rather do the content that people want to watch, and then we will simply do the twig as a free view. Okay. Yeah. That's the best way to do. Yeah. It. So right. I'm not going to say we're going to. Polly Pocket. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can we do something like that? No idea what they looks like. You have to tell me. It's like a little tiny little plastic doll. We have to buy one by Monday. I'll go to the charity shop and see if they've I'll got. I'll go on eBay and buy one. <laughs> okay. I'll write that down. Twig and Polly Pocket. Twig. Polly Pocket. Yes. 
if you cast metal, it's more prone to break in when you bend it. Um, cool. If you, if you, David, if you, if you cast it straight, you can bend it, no problem. I know somebody, there was a, an article on, um, all right, I had to flick the comments. <laughs> There was um, an article, there was somebody was asking about casting twigs on one of the Facebook forums. They want to cast it in bronze or brass or whatever. And everyone's saying you can cast it, but you can't twist it round because it's going to snap. But that's the advantage that you've got. If you cast it in silver, you can really move it around and shape it and have a crossover ring. And there's so much more that you can do with it. So if you want to let me know what you want us to do for next week. And this is the thing that we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing another Q&A next week from four o'clock to five o'clock. But the workshop is going to start at half past five next week, which is the 16th of, yes, the 16th of May. So the next workshop, casting again, without the waffle, with your topics, your projects you want us to do, half past five next Monday. Ah. That's about it. Isn't it? Must, I, I, but I did. Some might Max figures. But I did feel really bad when I, I hooked up the the drive to the computer and I thought, this is a three hour workshop. Why is it only 800 meg? And I think, oh no, let's have a look. And I looked at it and it just was absolutely awful. Absolutely awful. So that's why I haven't really put it on at the bench at the moment. I just wanted to work out what we were going to do. We thought we could try and improve the quality, but we can't because the quality is there already and it's absolutely naff. The quality that actually came from YouTube was twice as better than what was recorded. And I don't know why it was recorded like that. I just do not know. Mm. Is this why we don't get upset about no, it? No, I was. I really was. I, I, know, I, I, really, I, know. I, I was really, upset too. I really was. So mm -hmm. we will do that um, for you guys. Cool. Okay, so yeah, if you've got any ideas, send them to me, louise at andrewberry.co.uk and we can look through them and, um, yeah. Yes, we will have a look. And get a feel of what you guys uh, want, want to want, see want cast. To see. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yes, we'll be casting the same things again. We'll be doing the ring again because the ring was really good. The medal, that worked out really well as well, so we're going to do that again. And whatever you Do you want to see the same things again? Or do you think people want to see different things? Well, it went wrong, didn't it? What, the recording or the no, casting? No, the casting, the casting <laughs> no, it went didn't. wrong. It didn't because it, you're being it, it, it was, today, it, Andrew. It, What's the matter? It wasn't close, was it? It was fine, but you just you just kept that flashing off. I want to show it perfect. But I would do I would really do that. Perfect. I would no, but I would do that again. If that was me and that's how it cast and came out, I thought, no, I'm gonna do that again. Because Isn't the, there always an element of that in, no, in because the thickness is slightly different and I want to get it right. I think it was right. I think you've been negative today and very down on yourself. Oh, come on, let's again. cheer Andrew up. Oh, come on, let's get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> let's get on with it. What am I doing now around okay. here? So do you have some questions? Okay. Um, I don't know yet. Let's have a look. What are we doing? That's about it. Okay, so it's Monday, the 9th of May, 4 p.m. Time for our Q&A. Louise, let's have our first question. Okay, great. Um... Okay, Penny is asking, how would you tackle mending a broken, very fine curb chain, or would you? Um, yes, I would. I would use the solder pick method. Now, I haven't even put my bench back together from last Monday, so I don't have any soldering equipment here. But what I would do is get the... I'll draw it on the board. I will draw it on the board. What you want to do is, is, is get the little links together, okay? So we've got uh, your, oh my goodness. Can we order some new pens? I'll write it in my diary. <laughs> That's not so bad, there we go. So there's your third hand, all right? It's on a base. That's your third hand, okay? You get the, the, the chain links and they're dangling down. And what you wanna do is where the, you have that one link that does this, you have the other links coming down here, okay? You, what you want to do is get your third hand right on that area by there. Okay, so there's no chance that these links here are going to get soldered because this is my tweezers by here. Okay, so here's the link that comes up like that and here's the rest of the chain down here. So then this is the join on the top by here. If you put your tweezers here, the, sol the solder and the heat will not travel down to these links. So it's nice and safe. Okay, so there is your join upon the top of there. Then what you want to do is get your solder pick. Okay, so there's your solder pick there. You want to put a little, tiniest little bit of solder on the end of it. Okay, so that's your bit of solder there. The idea is then you bring this 
in contact or very, very near to the top of the, um, your fluxed link. So you put flux on it, okay? You get the flame then from your torch on the wire here. So the flame is on the wire. It's not on the link at all. As the wire heats up red and the color travels, so it's red, 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 it comes to here, the solder will start to melt. Then what you want to do is bring down the solder pick so it touches the link. Okay, so the pick, you still got your flame on it, you still got the flame on this, the pick touches the join and it is the heat from the pick, because it's been heated by the torch, that will transfer the heat to the link. The link will not melt, okay? But the link will get hot enough for the flux to protect the area, and the solder will go, oh, another hot surface. So I'm going to transfer myself a little bit of me, because it's not that hot, and it's going to transfer right onto the join. When that happens, you take the pick off. And because you haven't heated up this link, the link is not going to melt and just simply relied upon the heat from the solder pick, then comes down, touches where it comes together, and the heat will be transferred. Simple as that. In theory. It takes a lot of practice to do it, so practice on some scrap chains to start off with. But that is going to be the best way to solder the most thinnest, tiniest, tiniest links, chains that you pick up from Argos, fight for four pound that sort of thing. But that's the best thing to do when you come to solder that chain together. Louise, let's have another question video. Okay. Um, Mini Maker is saying, what tools do you use to grab onto a ring to polish it on the inside, please? And I you, believe it's this one. You want that one. It is a ring clamp holding oh, lever. Well done. It's a ring clamp holding lever. Looks like a nutcracker. Um, that is what we use and it saves, <coughs> it saves your fingers no end. And you can use it for it holding. Um, I don't have one here. I've taken it downstairs because Lee wanted to use it the other day. It's a brilliant piece of equipment. P two pieces of wood sprung. I get a picture of it now. Hang on. Thank you, Louise. I've just put the link in the chat as well. Okay, so that's, that's the link if you want to go and buy it in our store. Mm. Um, it's, it's good, it's good for, because the, the ring is going to get hot no matter what metal. You're holding it, you're polishing it, you're filing it, whatever. You want to protect your hands put it in the, the clamp and you can file it, you can polish it and the heat doesn't transfer to your, um, whatchamacallit, your fingers, that's it. So that's the clamp there, you can see it's sprung on the end. How much is it, Louise, 795? 795, yes, yeah, so that's it. So in there's action, a picture then. of me, picture of it with the, you can use your sanding drums with it, you can use burrs with it, you can use polishing it with a Dremel, with a flex shaft, you can do all that with it, absolutely easy peasy. We sell them in the store. We have plenty in stock. I think we've got about 12, 15 in stock. We've got plenty at the moment in stock. So you want to go and grab yourself one of those, you're more than welcome to. And there's plenty of other things on there. All that over £20, you get um, a mask free. So the others we've got, they are not really for polishing, are they? Others? The other ring clamps. No. No, they're no. for, yeah. Yeah. And then you also get a better one of these free some people say that that's a lot better. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So, so go and grab yourself your own uh, copy. But that's the best thing to do, yes. Louise, let's have another question. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Tanya is saying, I want to solder some wire together for dragonfly wings. How do I go about this, please? Hmm. Uh, la, 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 la. The inside... Perhaps the inside, so you've got your dragonfly wings that look like that, I do believe. Um, so you want, I, I presume you want to solder these wires, something like that, I don't know. Is that how dragonfly wings look? Good, something like that, I, I, I don't study insects, but. Entomology. Entomology, but the times are... <laughs> anyway, all right, so what, what you want to do, you want to do your outer frame first. Your outer frame is going to be thicker. This frame is going to be thicker wire. Make it, make it so. Um, have it like that, okay? You solder the end so it's, it's a completely enclosed frame. Make sure you do two, so then you can then separate it out. All right, so then they're both identical. What you want to do then is to put it on a nice soldering board. Uh, they solder... Uh, 
block, okay? Then what you want to do is get your pieces of wire and you can just simply cut them with a pair of uh, cutters, some flush nose or even just normal side cutters, end cutters, and just get your pieces of wire that would go from there to there. What I would do then is lay it on the block, put a bit of flux in this area here, tie a little bit of solder and get the torch on this. So here's your torch. Heat up the outside by here and then bring it towards the joint. And because this wire is slightly thicker than the thinner wires, you can heat up this wire and the heat then will be transferred to this wire and it'll solder. Once you've got that soldered, bend this down onto this wire here. You can solder that. Don't try and do it in, in one go because sometimes when you solder this, this wire may move, go back and forth, but you can always bring that back into place and solder it. Then what you want to do is, for instance, then you come along and you solder that one there and then you solder it here. You can solder this one here, solder it there, solder there, solder down there, solder here. And you literally do it one solder joint at a time. Don't try and do it all in one go. You're going to be heading for, for, for trouble because these are going to move and the surfaces have to be touching. So just do one. Bend it into place, make sure it's touching flux it and do the same thing, put your torch on the wire here and then let the heat transfer to this joint, tiny bit of solder, tiniest bit of solder, make sure you hammer the solder flat or roll it, then cut tiny little pallions off it, it's going to be the best way to do it and do it literally one wire, one end, the other end, one end, the other end, one end, the other end at a time and you should be able to solder them absolutely gorgeously. So that's actually quite a nice idea for a little project, that, isn't it? Mm. And then we could do some plique jour. I said, well, couldn't we? Nice. Right, let's have another question, Lou. Okay, um, Julia is asking, how do I test yellow metal to see if it is gold? I have some bits and bobs that came in an auction lot. Some have all marks, some not. I'm guessing it's all over 100 years old. Mm. I think Louise could actually tell you about well, this because Louise has been doing some I've of this, haven't you? I've been doing a bit you? of this, yeah. We've um, got, I'm not sure where you've got the kit actually. Yeah, we don't sell it's that a, unfortunately. No, we don't, well, because we don't. Because it's dangerous it to send dangerous. through the post. This is, the, yeah, this is Get it from Cookson's, Cookson's or, it's dangerous, or Best yeah. Metals. It's a, um, a collection of acids, was it? Troy four test. or five? Yeah. Troy testing kit. Um, strong acids, sulfuric acid? Sulfuric, nitric. Mu muric, um, yes, yeah. hydrofluoric so it's, it's acids. So it's eyewear gloves, mask, um, eye, protection. Uh, masks, eye protection, everything, because they're, they're seriously strong acids. Um, and you put a, you sit down and wear your full PPE, you know, apron, everything, um, and just put the tiniest drop. It tells you which acid to use to test which metals. So the, um, the acid for like nine carat yellow will be different for silver and again different for um, 18, different for 22. Um, and by like a process of elimination, you it gives you a different stain on the metal. Um, but I think the results are really subtle. They are. Very subtle. Mm. So like what I need to do, because I've only just started doing this, because you would say, well, that's brown. And I was like, that's not brown. That's nothing. Mm. But obviously you've done it for a long, long time. Um, so what I need to do is test metals that I know the, the carrot yeah. of and I know the, what the metal is. Mm. And then just look really carefully for that reaction. And build of experience okay. in that and then I can test things that I don't know what they are because I'll know what the reaction is supposed to look like. Yes. So yeah, that yep. would be what what you can do. Yeah, what try I would do, yeah. yeah. But try. one yeah, I, you need a little bit of experience to think before you can recognize the mm. but they are but really that was my personal experience anyway. Really subtle differences, aren't they? They really uh, yeah. are very, very subtle. So I've got a little bit of but I'm a bit terrified of the acids, which doesn't help. <laughs> but oh my god, it's a big drop, it's a big drop. It's a big Andrew, what's gonna happen? It's gonna burst through the bed. <laughs> but yeah, no, please do be careful. Yeah, yeah it is a very it, it comes in a in a little wooden kit with the holes drilled with a lock on it and everything. But they are really it's dangerous. Got a crossbows jobby for long. Really dangerous, dangerous acids. Yeah. The easiest test is to tell test something whether it is plated or not. Bottle number one, what you've got to do, there's, there's two methods of doing it. You can get a little bit of crocus paper, a little bit of a file, a little bit of emery paper, just put a little bit of a emery paper mark on the inside of the shank perhaps, um, then you get the bottle, then you put the, the, the acid on the area that you've just cleaned 
and you observe what happens. Um, as I say, if it's plated, it's the easiest one. It turns green. That's a, quite an easy one to see. But Louis said, if you get some pieces that you know is nine carat, that you know is 18 carat, use the right metals, then you can observe the color. But the color is subtle. It mm -hmm. really is. Or use what's called a touchstone. This is what Penny's just suggested. Yeah, we've got a touchstone. No, huh. no. It's just like, it's just like a bit of slate, but it, it's, it's, it's more destructive to the piece because you have to get the ring on your touchstone and you have to go like that, so you get a gold streak But you've got on to there. polish out the stain anyway, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, but you've taken quite a bit of metal off the mm. piece, so this is more of a destructive way. It's more destructive, then, but it's safer than chucking acids around the place. But then you've got to put acid in on touchstone. Oh, well, there we are then, yeah. And <laughs> Didn't so you've still <laughs> got a touchstone, acid on a touchstone, and then it tests the streak that's on the touchstone. It's more destructive because the if you, you want to melt it down or send it off, well then the touchstone is going to be a lot easier. Mm. But usually if someone comes in or we're doing something for evaluation or we're buying in for, for, for pre-owned, you can't... Uh, what's the word? Dis disfigure the... Not yeah, I suppose you can't, you can't scratch something and then give no. it back to your customer, can no. you? No, uh, you have yeah. to do it very subtly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good way of doing it. But it's a Troy um, testing kit. Yeah, Joe was asking, do you use electronic testers as a backup to confirm your findings when testing? We methods? don't. Well, I have used them. Um, Midas, I think it is one, but they are pretty expensive. Oh, um, Scrappy's saying a magnet is also helpful. If it is, if there is, that's not always best because gold is not necessarily um, magnetic. Yeah, Penny agrees. Yeah, I find it difficult to work out the results from the acid. We should. Well, we got a metallurgist. We should get him on here, shouldn't we? You should, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but but things like platinum, palladium, yes, is going to be um, uh, magnetic. And obviously, then if you've got like a base metal, it doesn't work on lead. It it only works slightly. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, I think I just need to do a bit of work with it and experiment. I White think coats so. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> goggles, goggles, back mask, to school. gloves, <laughs> apron, the lot. Yeah. Absolutely, but it's good, yeah. Mm. Cool, and it's okay. exciting then. <laughs> no, it is exciting. <laughs> I find it a bit sad but then again, <laughs> sorry, so sorry. Going back to the electronic kit, kit, kitting, kit. It's like, like your gem testing, isn't it? You don't necessarily use the electronic tester to clarify what you see with the naked eye, do you? No, that's right. It's, it's quite like it's the opposite testing, way around. It? Yeah, mm. you perhaps you would use the tester. For, is it diamond, whatever? Then you look at it then with your eye and with your loop and your other magnification. You should look things. with your eye, eye first, then your loop, shouldn't you? With yes. everything, that's the first thing you do. Yeah, but electronic yeah. equipment doesn't necessarily back up your findings. It's just a means of assisting you and helping you and distinguishing what it is mm. initially, perhaps. Mm. Okay, let's have another question. Then. John said, "Dad would have an." I've said it wrong. If I. Metallurgist. It's a metallurgist. I think some people say it metallurgist. Metallurgist? Oh no, it's We're potato. We're back to potato, 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 potato now, aren't we? Meta <laughs> I will say it's a metallurgist. <laughs> let's have another okay, question. Let's have another question. <laughs> um, okay, how far did we get? Um, it's metal. Mm -hmm. Metallurgist. Metallurgist, yeah. That's right. Metallurgist, metallurgist. Um, David is saying, "What? Um, sorry, if you cast metal, is it more prone to breaking when you bend it? Not necessarily. You can get porous castings. Um, if you have too much oxygen when you're melting the silver, the silver absorbs all the oxygen uh, from the torch, so it shouldn't be too hissy. It should be a little bit more of a softer flame. Um, a few little tips when you're melting silver, you'll find me doing it correctly um, on Monday is that what you want to do is heat the crucible first until the crucible is bright red then you put your silver in it then you put your torch on it and you don't remove the torch from the silver until you've cast it that makes sure that the silver is protected from the atmosphere so that'd be the correct way of doing it and if you have a good casting the silver should not break when you bend it absolutely but if you're doing other metals things like brass or bronze it is likely to break should you try and bend it? Yes. So another question. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. uh, people are saying they still enjoyed the workshop last week regardless, oh, good. which thank is you. very kind. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tessa is saying you're going to show us the results of the casting from last week. 
I haven't cut the castings off. No, I haven't yet. No. Um, but perhaps, perhaps what I'll do is, is, is cut the sprues off on the ones that I did last week and I'll show them this coming week. Yes. Okay, good. Um, um, where did I get to? Um, Helena is saying, is there such a thing as a reference guide um, to the average depth of a faceted stone from both the table to collet and girdle, oh, culette, sorry, and girdle to culette? Yes, they are precise measurements when the proportions and the diamonds are done correctly. Uh, um, do you mean diamonds or coloured gemstones? Because faceted stones just won't They're follow. all over the place. It's only no. diamonds which will have a specific, or should have, if they if they it's a, brand I, brilliant. Yes, I don't have anything. But if you look on, on the web, obviously these shaped stones like this, uh, diamonds, these proportions here, if, if it's an ideal cut, and these proportions here and are the all... the angles as well will be within a few degrees. Yeah. On what side? On the, the angle between the girdle oh, yeah. and the... Um, yeah. Yeah, these angles. Every, every angle... And the pavilion. Yeah. Mm. So all these would be... Um, if you're looking at diamonds with the ideal cut, all these proportions should be within a, a fraction of each other if it is the ideal cut. The problem is you're never going to get items that are going to have the ideal cut. For instance, uh, to make coloured stones better colour, they're going to be cut like that just so there's more depth to the stone. And obviously, the greater the depth, the more intense the colour's going to be. So they're going to cut them like that. And that's a pain in the bottom when you come to, to set them and you need to, to have your setting birds because these are angles here are all over the place. So there is no standard, and people don't work to standards. Mm, and you may, you, you may get, you know, you, you want a nice pale sapphire? Okay, they'll, just, they'll just, just do that. And they'll just make a very, very shallow pavilion on the sapphire so it's pale but they may use the same stone and have it deep like that to make it a deeper color so there's lots of ways the stone cutters get around these things uh, to make their life easier and to make stones look better and you can charge a greater price if you're based upon weight for the stones because there's greater weight in a big bellied stone like that so they can just be cut really any way that makes them attractive because yeah. they're not reliant on reflecting the light in the same way Exactly. Through the stone and back, well, not through, it doesn't go through its um, back into your eye. Yes. Um, in the way that a, a, a brilliant cut diamond is. Yeah, exactly. So there is a, there is, there is a, a, a formula for, for ideally proportioned cut diamonds, but not for colour stones, no. Another question? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, Sandra is saying, do you have to ball the solder before picking it up on the pick, or can it be um, pallion? Now, what I would try and do is try and add a bit of flux to the solder pick and melt the solder onto the pick so the pick is coated with the solder. Then, because if you have the pick, the pick tip looks like this, and you have, say, a blob of solder like this on top of it, that is more likely to transfer the whole transfer onto your ring, but little jump ring. But if you've managed to melt that and it's just all over the tip, there's a tiny little bit of solder here that will transfer. So melt the solder onto the tip beforehand. You may want to clean the tip with a bit of emery paper, then put some flux on it, then you want to melt a tiny bit of solder onto the tip, then use that then to transfer across. Okay, um, David is saying, do you ever use a traditional brass soldering iron that is heated in a furnace? Um, no, I don't ever would need to do that um, in, in, our, uh, in our trade, no. Um, I can't see the benefit for it. Mm -hmm. I'm, sure, I'm sure they used to do that when they did um, lead glass windows, perhaps, and heated it up, uh, but not in the jewellery trade, no. Okay. Question. Um, Stacey's saying, um, if we don't see the mess ups, we might get discouraged or even continue with this trade thinking we have to do everything perfect every time. And that is just asking for too much from ourselves. There is, but. That's absolutely right. You're right, but there's no problem redoing it 
No. Once you know the problem, to try and get it done again. But it's important yeah. to know that hmm? everything doesn't go 100% right all the time. When I oh. have my allotment, this has gone way off the point now, but um, <laughs> I knew a, a man... Let's <sighs> open the kettle on, shall we? <laughs> no, I knew a man who, he was a, um, a horticultural lecturer. Yes. So he was like top of his field, knew everything about it. He was, he was brilliant, he knew everything. And... Um, he had, he had times where his beans failed and I had brilliant beans. There was one year his, his spuds didn't grow and I had too many. <laughs> and yeah, but it just, that's yeah. just the way it is, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. And I think the important thing is understanding the reason why things don't work out right. Yeah, sometimes, and that's why it's very good to keep a, um, a note in a journal, which is where the time tracker's um, notebook comes in handy, really, because mm. you can write down things that you've done and if you're making a common error. Mm. Yep. It's Listen. good to record it, isn't it? And then you mm. can look back and, and reflect on things. Exactly. So, mm. yeah, it is, it is a good idea. You have to make mistakes. That's the only way you're going to learn. Absolutely. You can't be perfect all the time. Yep. Okay, Let's so that's a, a really good point, Stacey. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, Scrap is saying, I was polishing a complicated piece I'm working on. One of the 66 solder joints broke. <laughs> oh, what's the best way to proceed without messing up the pre-polish? It depends on what on how it's all being constructed. Because what you don't want to do is start to put the flame on the joint to resolder it and all the other joints all fall apart. So uh, what you could do is support everything apart from that one little joint and have that one little joint open. And you can do that. You've seen it on Instagram. I'm, I'm glad it's the, 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 the popularity of this. Because that's all I used to see is these people putting things in plasticine and then a, a jam jar or a collar over the top and fill it with investment. But what you could do in your case is put the piece, and I don't know what it is, <coughs> stand it, stand it on um, like some Play-Doh, some plasticine, some Daz, uh, air clay, whatever it is, put a collar around it, put your piece in it, fill it up with investment powder, mix it with some water. So all you leave is just that little, little bit of solder that you need to, uh, to, to rejoin it and then when the investment is dried then you can remove the collar you can safely solder on that one little area knowing that everything else is going to be held together because it's not going to get to up to temperature or if it does it's always been held together um, you're not going to be able to well when you then quench it in your acid, even though you've sort of pre-polished it, the pre-polish is still there, but what you've got on the outside of the piece is gonna be your, uh, your fine metal, like your fine silver or your fine gold, that you would need to come along with perhaps a nice soft brush just to remove it to get back to the underneath that should be nice and shiny. So that would be my sort of way of doing it. Or if you've got access to a laser welder, Brilliant, you can use laser welder, or if you've got a PUK, a lampard puck, you can always use that and just puck that one joint together. So those are the sort of things that you can do to stop everything falling apart on you, yes. But without seeing that, I couldn't necessarily give you a, a definitive um, answer. But yeah, good, like that. Okay. Yes, Liam. Good. Um, Fiona is saying, are we still able to get products for casting at a discount? You are until next week, I do believe, but I will extend it because of the workshop. Um, I think it expires. Very good if you I think oh, right. I think it expires the sixteenth. So your ten percent is still there, and it is white sand that's to get your ten percent. Sand. Oh. That's just white sand. It sounds like you said white sand. White again. sand. White we sand. had confusion last week. That, we did. Didn't it we? was white, white sand. sand. Duh. Duh. Not white sands. Sand. White sand. Duh. Thank you. Next question. You said it fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You. Cool. So yes, another week at least. Good. Um, David um, from California, what immersion liquid do you suggest for examining gemstones and where can I purchase it? Go for it, Lou. I like immersion this. Immersion liquid. Immersion liquid. Mm. Is it to do with specific gravity, that sort of thing? Oh, for SG. Yeah, Just perhaps, awesome, maybe. Um, do I know how to is it? I don't know. So I, I thought it was just water. I don't know. Should you pass on that one? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I think, it's just, I think it's just water. I know the camera's still on me. Sorry, Louise, it should be on you. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just water. Mm. But does it need to be deionised de water? Oh, I don't know. Because the um, specific gravity is something's um, weight compared to the weight of an equal volume of water. Right. So it's water. 
okay. you're talking about SG. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is that what they mean? Could be. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Or if because you, it works yeah. by water displacement. Hmm. Yeah. Is yeah. that what you mean? Very good answer. Well done. Thank you. More than what I could do. Well done. Let's have another question. Still fresh in my mind, see. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I hope that helps. If it doesn't, let me know or like drop me an email and yeah, we'll do our best to help you. And if I can't answer it, I can put Get you in touch with somebody, somebody who can. Guess, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Penny saying my shadow tray has arrived for my sand casting, so look forward to having a go. Yay! Good. Loved the workshop last week. Let's see some pictures. Cool. Good. Yeah, send us some pictures, please, of, you know, of what you're doing. Yeah. Um, Mary Ann, do you need a different solder pick for each kind of solder? Um, it depends. You can always clean... In theory, yes. But I don't think it would matter too much. You can always just get a file to remove it off the end of your solder pick. If you're just simply picking it up, you know, you've got your block here, you've got your solder pick, uh, which hand is it? In your right, right hand, because I'm left-handed. Get your torch, you melt the solder, you get your solder pick, you're just bringing your solder pick towards you and that will then attach itself to your solder pick. It's on your solder pick, you get the joint, you get the solder, you put it on it. So it's just a, a way of carrying the solder from your block to the piece. I don't hardly ever use it. Thank you. you I hardly ever use a solder pick. I find it laborious. I find it a waste of time for me because I've always got a pair of tweezers. There's always tweezers in this hand. You can do the same thing with a pair of tweezers. You just melt the solder. As soon as the solder starts to melt, you get your tweezers. You bring your tweezers towards you or away from you. The solder sticks to the tweezers. Then you use the tweezers to transfer it over. Then you've still got the tweezers in your hand and you can use the tweezers to do whatever you want to do. So I find solder picks for myself. Um, there's no, not much point, you've got to put your tweezers down, pick your solder pick up, put your solder pick down, pick up your tweezers. It's all hassle for me. But if you're doing this method of melting the solder onto the end of the solder pick, ideally, yes, you should. You should always have a different solder pick because you're melting the solder onto it as opposed to just using it as a means of transport from block to the piece. Yes. Let's have another question. Okay, and um, Penny uses a journal for key learning from each project, so I don't make the same mistake again. I just make new ones, lol. But that's how you learn, that isn't That is it? exactly right. Well done, yeah. Fabulous. Good yeah, that's really it. good. Yeah. Um, okay, Diana is saying, I often use a pick, but sometimes oh, the... Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes the ball of solder rolls around the pick and I can't get it to attach to my ring. What am I doing wrong? Um, the solder doesn't attach itself to the pick? Um, the solder... Uh, I often use a pick, but sometimes the ball of solder rolls around the pick and can't, I can't get it to attach to my ring. Uh, so I would say what you need to do is to make sure that you've got your flux on the joint of the ring. And then when you heat up the ring, because what you want to do is heat up the ring. You don't really want to bring the solder straight away onto the cold joint because it just will not attach itself to it. You want to heat up the ring until the the flux is perhaps turning a different color and the flux is warm. Then you bring the solder with the pick towards the joint. You touch the solder onto the fluxed area. The solder then should attach itself to the flux. It is just purely a means of carrying it. It's one heat is on the pick, which is zero basically, and the other heat is on the joint and it's the heat and the solder, no, the heat and the flux that will help the solder come across and attach itself to the joint. Okay. I'm going to have my sweet now. Do you want another question? Yes, please. Okay, Faye um, is saying, I use a small hand torch and want to ask if moving to a Smith's little torch will be better to lessen the chance of fire scale. Um, the, the idea is you've got to get in and out quick. You want to make sure that you don't have unnecessary uh, prolonged heating up on a piece because that is how the... Uh, fire scale uh, appears on the surface. So a Smith's little torch is great. I think it's one, it's one of the best torches out there. You can have things like a, a, a aqua flame, a micro elder, but for me, I don't like them. I think they're not a, a, as, as versatile as something like a, a Smith's little torch. The problem is now, is that you are progressing from a handheld torch with butane into a Smith's Little Torch, which needs two um, uh, gases, 
Okay, in this country we use propane, in America and the US you predominantly use acetylene. So you'd have to have a gas, a tank of gas, you'd also have to have oxygen. Now oxygen can be supplied in a tank or an oxycon, an oxygen converter. So you have to then pay for your tank of gas, you have to buy a tank of oxygen or your oxy converter. It's not just the torch, the torches are cheap, but it's everything else that goes with it. You then would need flashback arresters for your butane or for your propane. You then are gonna need um, taps and valves for your propane or your acetylene. And these things add up. You don't necessarily need a flashback arrestor upon the oxygen on a, an oxycon, but, but I know when we started with the Smith's Little Torch, it was about a hundred pound for the torch, perhaps even less for the torch, but the flashback arresters cost us a fortune, um, or the dials, so you know how much pressure and how much uh, gas is in the tanks, they cost a fortune as well. So it seems like a very, very simple step, doesn't it? From a handheld butane torch like these here to a Smith's. It sounds very easy, but it's quite costly. What I would do is go for something that is, again, is a single flame, no, it's a single gas. So again, if you're in the US, perhaps you may wanna have things like propane and have, um, is it Hoke, Hoke, H-O-K-E, uh, which is a single flamed torch. Or in this country, we use things like a sievert torch. I'm not quite sure which part of the world you're in, uh, but a sievert torch is gonna be far better than your little handheld because it uses propane as opposed to the butane. So propane is gonna burn at a, a, a much hotter temperature. You then can have all the different size nozzles to put on your, smith, on, on your sievert torch. So you can put the thick, big, heavy nozzles to do some melting down or the fine pencil nozzle to do some very delicate work. So that, for me, would be the next step up into perhaps being a bit more professional, a bit more serious in your work and producing better quality work because you've got a hotter heat, you can produce bigger pieces and that for me would be the next step. So go to, again to your single fuel, but in, a, I can't remember the other, Easy Torch I think was one of them. It is a single fuel, but make sure you do that. Smith's Little Torch, if money's no object, go for that, definitely. But I think a Sievert or an Easy Torch or a Hoke is gonna be the next one up. Absolutely, let's have another question. Okay, um, Delmar is saying, why do the head of my ingots keep breaking off when I pour them in a vertical mold? They literally crack and fall off. No other problems than that. Um, and it's re not really a problem, just curious why. Um, I don't like um, vertical moulds. I've never got on with the vertical mould and I know they've never got on with me. <laughs> I don't necessarily like them because you're reliant upon gravity to, to, to go down. What sometimes happens um, is, you know, you have the, the, the hole down here, okay, so this is like inside, you pour your metal in, it dribbles in, bleh, dribbles in and then it starts to fill up, okay? So if you don't pour fast enough, I know you can't quite see that, can you? Um, if you don't uh, pour fast enough, you're gonna get this metal here that is solidifying, a bit more molten metal coming on, then that's gonna solidify. Another bit of molten metal, that's gonna start solidifying. So you're getting various stages of solidification. Is that such a word? No, I think that's a word. That's a pretty good, that's the biggest word I've used today. <laughs> I'm quite pleased myself with that. So, what, so this is what happens, the, the metal will start, start to, to, to cool. And sometimes then you'll get a bit of flux that'll come, bleh, flux will come in that will cause like a bit of a pocket and the metal comes on top. So when you separate the two halves, you've got various stages of, of the metal cooling. And if it's cooled quickly, because the first bit will cool quickly, and the next one comes in, you may get a fracture, you may get a breakage. And then you normally have your sprue up on the top of here and invariably the top of the sprue will snap off. It just happens. So they are good molds. And if you want to produce a shaped metal quicker than if you use a, a, a long mold, they're great. This is ideal for using um, your scrap to make sheets, and it is a really good way of making sheets. Again, the problem is if you're doing sheet, because you've got such 
a wide section here and you're pouring a little bit of metal here, what you may find, it, it, again, exactly the same problem, it'll flow, it'll do this, it'll flow down here, it'll flow down here, flow down here, and it'll be sort of this shape. Okay, that's how you, your sheet may turn out because you're pouring in from one angle or you pour from the center and it may end up this shape. So it's not always the best mold. We sell them because we use them and they are good. For me, I would always use the open top molds. Again, we sell the open top molds and they are simply, let's get another pen. Let's see if my green pen is gonna be good. So that's a bit better. So we use these molds and you've got the grooves in these, okay? So you, there, there's three grooves, there's two on the top, and there's one underneath, and they're open. So you pour the metal in and the metal just flows and fills it. And I find I have better results using the open molds than if we use the, uh, the reversible and the adjustable vertical molds. But that is gonna be the problem. And the advantage with this is, is that you can choose like a five millimeter or an eight millimeter, or you can turn it over to make about a 10 millimeter piece. And the good thing is when the metal flows in, you finish, the metal will flow and fill it. So you don't get um, this little button that comes on the top of your casting. And this is bits wasted it's because the metal fills up the ingot mold completely. Why does it, the answer was, why does it snap off? Um, it may be the sudden cooling, I don't know. But it doesn't matter because that's supposed to come off anyway at the end of it. But if you have successful casts, brilliant, well done. Um, I, I've never managed to get, to guarantee get a result. I get better results with these open molds. So there we go. Louise, should we have another question? Yeah, um, Scrap Over Engineering um, is saying, is the polish I'm worried about, um, oh, this is back to the... Multi-66 soldiers. Yep. Um, the polish I'm worried about, it's star-shaped prongs in a double-layered circle. I think I can solder the single joint without too much risk. It is. It, the thing is, the polish, the surface, will always be there. It's when you put it into the acid, the acid or the pickle will get rid of those, imp not, the, the alloy on the surface, and that will leave like a matte sort of finish about it. But all you should really need to do is come along, even just with a soft cloth with a bit of powdered rouge, just to rub it back and you'll come back then to the polish that the metal had before you quenched it. So that'd be the way around it then. Let's have another question. Okay, uh, med um, metal detecting, um, how to put gold on top of gold. Not quite sure, I, I saw that and I don't quite understand what you mean. Yeah, put some more do detail. You, do you mean things like soldering gold on top of gold? Perhaps just give us a bit more information and, and we'd be gladly help you. Okay, uh, Marin is saying, I'm trying to solder a D-section strip of wire to both long sides of a wide decorative wire for a cuff bracelet. Um, I'm having trouble getting everything lined up to solder. Uh, okay, so I understand what you mean. The pieces have got to be absolutely flat. So flat, it's unbelievable because if there's a slight deviation at all, it's going to show. So your like three pieces have got to be absolutely spot on. And are you trying to do it flat? Was it trying to do the whole thing flat? Was it Louise? Yeah. Sold um, them side by side flat. Uh, solder a D section strip of wire to both side, long sides of a white decorative wire for a cuff bracelet. Okay, so if you have got a, a rectangular section for argument's sake, okay, like that, and you've got a D section wire here, and you've got a D section wire here, okay? So what you've got to make sure is that when this wire goes right next to the other wire, all the pieces of metal have got to be straight. So this has got to be perfectly flat and it must not wander as well. So it's, it's, it is one heck of a job to get perfect. But the advantage that what you could do, you'd have to get something like uh, one of these solder boards that's going to be perfectly flat. You have to get a, a, a mallet on a flat surface and make sure you hammer the metal 
flat, oh so flat in all the planes, so this plane and that plane. What I would do then is make sure these edges are perfectly smooth and, and, and clean. Make sure you get some emery paper on them, make sure you flux them to within an inch of their life. Then what you want to do is lay them out on the board so then you get some pins. These boards are a little bit on the soft side. What I would do then is I'll do it on this one by here. So then here's your D section wire by here. What you want to do then is, is arrange all this on the block so that comes in um, like that. Okay, so there's your D section wire by the sides of this. And then what you want to do is get a pin right by the side. Here's your pin, okay? And that will stop this metal from moving apart. And likewise, over this side, you want to put a pin. And the down, long side here, you want to put another pin, another pin, if that makes sense. So looking down on top, you've got your, you put your pin here, pin there, pin there, pin there. And that will hold everything together. Because what you'll find is that when you put the flux along here, and the flux then starts to uh, expand with the heat, it's going to push everything out. But if you have the pins, that'll hold everything together. Then you can put your solder on here and use the flame to tease the solder along the joint as you go. Put another bit of solder here and tease the solder with the heat of the flame and you should be able to get sides put onto the ed edge of a central piece of flat section or square section or whatever it's going to be. It is a really hard job. Then once you've done it, then perhaps what you could do, if you've got a little bit of undulations, you can hammer it flat. You could do that with it. Um, or you could even sort of put it through through like a rolling mill, but you're going to get flats then put up on the top. But it is a hard job. And that's the best way that I can imagine. You could come along with some binding wire and bind it. Um, but the problem is then if you have a bit of binding wire and you bind it, if it's too tight, it's going to pull it. So they're all going to be sort of that way then, aren't they? They're going to be all over the place. Yeah. So good luck. It's a hard job. Um, if you want any more help, just email Louise. But that would be the best way that I think you're going to get it right. Some of the question. Not okay. Made, was it time now? Five, two. Okay. Okay. Uh, Janet's saying we're making ear wires... Um, or stamens for silver flowers. That's the long, like, bit in the middle with the pond on the end. Um, uh, <laughs> just checking that you know. Of course I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, cheeky thing. Of course I know. Just checking. Just checking. I've studied flowers. When? I'm a bit of a gardener. Where I was in my younger days. You know okay. that. Okay, anyway. <laughs> when they're the reproductive organs of flowers. Okay. All the schoolboys know that. Okay. <laughs> when balling up the ends of the wire, why do the balls inevitably fall off at some point? <laughs> <laughs> do you want the question again? Are you listening no, or are you speaking? I totally understood that. <laughs> Why do the balls fall off? I would have thought it's due to perhaps the shock of the cooling down between the wire and the ball. Um, I don't know why the balls have fall off, to be honest. I, I've never had any, any problems with that. Um, and perhaps I think if you heat up the metal, you, you're doing it upside down. So there's the wire, uh, there's the flame here, and you're melting it, and it's going, and you're left with the ball by there. If you're doing it upside down that way, it could be perhaps suddenly taking the torch away um, quickly, and then you get a little bit of fracturing by here. Or if you've done that and you thought, oh, put it in acid, and you quench it in acid really quick whilst this is still red hot, you may find that you're going to get this metal here cooling down at a different rate to this metal because they're going to be different masses. So you may get a fracture across there, which may be the cause of your balls falling off. By I don't know exactly, but that's what I'm thinking. Um, it could just be to the... you have, Because what you normally do is heat the ball and then retract your torch slowly. Then let it cool, then put it in the acid. Take a torch away too quick, they're going to cool down at different rates. Quench it too hot and they're going to cool down and you're going to get a fracture, I think. Let's have another question. Okay. Uh, Marin is saying, um, also I'm concerned about getting solder on... Oh, this is going back to the cuff with the... Yep. Yep. Okay, yep. Um, concerned about getting solder on the decorative wire if I solder from the top, um, but the wires are different <clears throat> thicknesses. Any suggestions? 
Um, you always try and solder from the back. So you'd have them running, um, obviously I don't know the shapes, but say you had rectangular section um, and you had like a fragment state round, um, I would have them upside down. So your decorative would be underneath and this would be what would be um, on the inside of the cuffs. This would be the underneath and then you can solder along here which then the solder then isn't really going to run on your decorative side. Or if you've got, this is your decorative side along here, what I would do is perhaps use some Tipex, yellow ochre paint, some whiteout, stop off, whatever you want to call it, and paint it all the way along the edge, along here. Not quite onto the very edge, but very, very close. So the solder, when it melts, will not run any further into the design than necessary. Now you've got to think about different thicknesses, which is going to be a different mass. These are going to be a lot uh, thinner than the central piece, so you have to heat up the main part more so than the outer. So you wouldn't put your torch by here in this angle because this is going to heat up, this is going to melt. So what you want to do is bring your torch down into this area here so you heat up this, because this is the biggest area. If this is twice as big as here, this is going to take twice as much heat to heat up than these would. So you'd put your torch in the center and you'd move along. And again, draw the solder along because solder does love the heat. So let's have another question. Okay, good. Um, Dylan is saying, any tips, any starting tips for making silver tubes with a tubing draw plate? Is there exact measurements for each sheet before using the plate? There is a formula to use to know what size metal to go all the way around. Now, what you, you, you really have to have a piece of metal, perhaps a piece of copper or brass, of the right inside diameter of the tubing that you want to make because you can draw the tubing down you can draw the outside the tubing down, but the inside will always stay the same size. You have to have a piece of metal, that shape. So this width is what it's gonna take to go from there all the way around to there, okay? In theory, but it's always better to practice on this. And you see, I've drawn it like that, because then when you twist it round, then you will get a piece. Okay, hammer this into this shape as well first, like that, okay? Then you wanna hammer it a little bit further around so it's virtually touching. The end then of the tang will be pretty much that sort of shape, like that. Then you use that to draw it through the draw paper. Once you bent it round into this shape, put your piece of metal in place, okay? See, a bit of metal is inside here now, like that. Bend it round, see, a bit of metal is inside here. Make sure it's, it's longer than your piece of metal. And then once you've bent it round into that sort of shape like that, then you can then draw it through your draw plate to make sure this outside diameter then is the size that you want, want it to be. And the inside diameter will always stay the same because your wire is in there. Keep on drawing it. What's going to happen? The metal's going to get longer and longer. So you've got to make sure that your piece of metal that goes on the inside is longer than what you actually need. Because if you want to make this and you start off with, say, one millimeter wire and you want to make the wall thickness half a millimeter wire, that metal is going to have to double in length. So you have to make sure that your form on the inside is longer than what you actually need. And it's going to have to protrude way out over there. So there is a formula, can't remember what it is, but it doesn't matter what it is really, you just have to keep on drawing it down to the right size you want. Let's read okay. another question. Um, oh, David, going back to the immersion stones question, yeah. it was to examine colour saturation. I don't know, sorry. Okay. You do know that? No, I don't actually, no. Hmm. I would probably just, if it's comparing, I would probably just put them on a white tray Mm. and use a like a daylight lamp mm. but i don't know susan might know because susan's very good with um susan on? susan yeah susan's here 
Um, Stephen was asking, um, is there an immersion liquid that you can use to immerse stones in to compare or to um, examine colour saturation in stones? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you know of anyone or anything, mm. Susan, can you pop it in the chat? Because I'd like to know now as well mm. <laughs> if, um, if you can do that. Um, great. Sandra saying, it took me about six months to research and decide how I wanted to upgrade uh, my butane from my butane torch. Finally went with Smith's little torch with camping propane bottle and oxygen concentrator in love. Oh, okay, well, that's good. good. <laughs> I hope you'd be very happy to get that. <laughs> 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 um, great. Brill, brill, brill. Um, Greg is saying buy a real Smith's little torch from a, a reputable oh, supplier. Definitely. Yeah, there are fakes on eBay. I've got one of the houses. Uh, one of the horses was, hoses were shorter and the valves were CREP and thus the flame was inconsistent. Yeah, it's worth spending the extra money. And yeah, you can buy them really cheap from from like, from, from, from abroad on, 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 on eBay, as you say, but it's not worth it because mm. it's dangerous stuff. What does Grace say? Buy she cheap. says lots of things, but I can't buy repeat twice. them. <laughs> mm. Buy cheap, buy twice. Yes. Buy cheap, buy twice. Yes. Yeah, but or don't. In this case, don't buy cheap because you might be buying dangerously. Yeah. Yes. So, that's so don't buy it. In that case, yeah. So, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. So, just don't. so buy it from a reputable dealer. Don't buy it from somebody on eBay. It looks the same. The packaging is the same. It, the hoses look the same, but you don't want to skimp on things like that because you are dealing with, with gas and flames and you don't want to go messing about with things yeah, like that. Yeah, it's not worth the risk. It's not, you're right. Um, Susan, oh great, thanks Susan, has said, is stone type specific and refractive index based? Okay. So, yeah. Hmm, Bit that's more interesting. Twist, yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, how far did we get? Uh, okay. Yep, Scrap is saying I agree uh, with the, about the torches. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, great, great, great. Um, where can you buy the pins, please? Jimmy is saying. Oh, any sort of pins, just like like dressmakers pins, dressmakers pins, uh, panel pins, uh, woodworking pins, anything like that. That's going to go through these boards. So it's it's not a special pin. Just bits of wire, bits of copper wire if you want, if you had them to hand, an old drill, an old burr, something like that that you can stick in the board and that will just stop the pieces from moving. But it can be the panel pins from a hardware store. Question. Good. Uh, metal detecting. Going back to the gold to gold question, yes. it's um, soldering gold to gold. Okay, just simply just use some gold solder. Sweat solder. I love a bit of sweat soldering. You've got um, a ring. Oh, wrong pen again. Uh, green one, here we go. You've got a ring. Okay, you've got the ring here. For argument's sake, I don't know what you do want to solder, but say you want to solder a ring, and you've got, um, say, a ball. You want to solder that ball on top of the ring. Clean this bottom area here, okay? A little bit of flux, and then you want to put your solder onto the ball. Put your solder down here, okay? Then make a slight little divot with a ball burr where the ball's going to go. Put a bit of flux in there. You could also do it the other way around. You could also put a little bit of solder in that area there instead of on the ball. But then what you want to do then is bring the ball down in contact, heat up the ring, okay? So the flame is on the ring, not on the ball. The ring will heat up, the heat will transfer to the ball. When the ball then is the correct temperature, the solder will flow between the two. And that works if you have like a very, a curved piece of metal that went on another bit of metal, anything like that, a bit of sweat soldering is going to be much better than if you put like a pallion by here, hoping that pallion then to flow equally between the ball and the ring or a flat sheet and a big long flat sheet because it never will flow properly. You'll always find this will flow perhaps onto this surface first and then you get a bit of a mark, then it'll flow in between, but you're always going to get that little bit of ghosting on the piece where it has flowed first. So that would be my little tip. Okay. Yes. Good. Go for it. Uh, Stacey's saying, the kids keep telling me I need to get with Times and Beyond Marketplace, but I have no intentions for Facebook. I think the old generation stay with CL. I can get completes, sellouts, lots easier. Yeah, it's hard to know what platforms to go on, isn't it? Yeah, everyone's saying Etsy's charges are through the roof. Yeah, I've now. seen that a lot. Mm. 
It's difficult. But then if you if you got your own website, mm -hmm. then obviously you've got to optimize it. But then do you have to optimize an Etsy platform in the sea? You still have to advertise it. Otherwise, you just get lost in the sea of of other things, yes. don't you? So yes, you, it's, it's a, you've it's got a the same problem, but somebody's taking your money for, for selling it. Yes, and which, which credit card companies do anyway. So if you had mm -hmm. your own little website through Wix or whatever the free websites are, you still have to take card payments and the, the, the card company is going to take money off you. And perhaps even the, the website company would take money off you as well. Yeah. You have to, that may be less, but then you're going to have to work on search engine optimization and getting your website looking right on mobile and also on desktop, whereas something like Etsy is already optimized you put in your keywords I suppose and mm. it goes that you way so you do it. pay yeah but once your website's up and running because I've been doing this the last mm -hmm. month of nine really yes. with the vintage and pre-owned stuff and it's just it's been a full-time job mm. but now that it's it's just tweaking it now it isn't an adding product yes. so that's no different really because I did think about having an Etsy store and it was just I gave up in the end, put two mm. products on, and I just thought, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> <laughs> it just felt like too much hard work for me, but then I'm a bit lazy, so... You just got other mm. things to do yeah. as well. Mm. So let's have a last question. It's nearly ten past five. Let's have Is a last it? question. Goodness me. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, oh, Sandra missed the question. Are those half rounds buttered against the flat bit or on top of it? Uh, butted to the side. Okay. I, th I think, or you can place one on top of the other if you wanted to. But the important thing is they have to be so flat, so straight. Um, it doesn't matter whichever way you want to do it. Okay. If you have it on, on the edge, obviously the whole metal is going to be a lot thicker. So you may have problems bending it if it's into a cuff. Maybe easier on the side. Depends upon you. Okay. Do you want another question? Yeah, go on. Yes. Um, Andre is saying, I have a six and a half by 4.3 mil diamond in need um, to set in a, a percasted setting. Precast? Yep, maybe. Um, would it be better to use a 6 by 4 or a 7 by 5 mil what setting? What was the size again? Sorry. 6.5 mm -hmm. by 4.3. You want to go for the larger. You need to go for the larger because it's very hard to um, say for argument's sake, there's the sides, okay? I'm not quite sure how it's all going to be. Um, but say then the stone comes in, you have to try and bend these claws out a little bit and sometimes you can't. Uh, what you may find if you bend them out, because you bent them out, the stone then can't sit low enough because again we go back to the depth of the stones, obviously the, the, the longer the stone or the wider the stone, the deeper the stone. So if you try and put a stone this bigger into a smaller setting, it may not have the depth that you need because you can always then come along with the bigger setting and just move them in slightly, knowing that you've got plenty of, 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 um, of movement up and down for the stone. I always had this problem, and I always sort of erred on the smaller size, thinking it's going to be a little bit lighter, I'm going to save a little bit of money and so forth, but it's always better to go that one little size bigger, knowing you can come along, and you've got a bit of extra metal, not to have to worry about. If you have it too short and you bend the claws out like that, if you bend the claws out, you have then have got a problem trying to set a, the, the stone in here. It may not fit. You may not have enough metal on the top because the stone can't go any lower and you're going to be landing yourself in an awful lot of problems. So yes, if it's half a, half a mil bigger, go to the next size setting. Don't try and squeeze it into something that it's not going to fit. And okay. I think we shall leave it at that. How yep. about that? Yeah. Good. Um, uh, Stacey's saying S Etsy is too costly. Mm. Um, David's saying if you have your own website, you have to generate your own traffic to the site, lots of networking and social media. Yeah, social media is just a I know the constant. Minefield. Yeah. It's amazing how much time we spend doing our socials. Mm. Louise wakes up in the morning, she spends about half an hour and lying in bed before she gets out of bed. <laughs> that makes me sound so sad. But yes, you, that. You, you, you do like your Canva post. We use Canva. We use the paid version of Canva and it's absolutely brilliant. So Louise is putting the Canva post together. She's uploading images, doing that. But that's she, the key, I think. I know that sounds 
like I just wake up and start working straight away mm. and there, I have plenty of breaks in the day mm. but that's when I just feel I don't know I just feel like I'm ready to do it and want to do it and if I can spend half an hour doing it then mm. and it doesn't feel too too arduous well then that's fine and then I can catch up with it lunchtime and then at tea time that's what I was gonna say sorry exactly. no I no just no in, but no it's, that's exactly, but yeah. that sounds like I just wake up and work, work, work from the inside of my eyes, which isn't true. I do balance. Because <laughs> then I'll just like go for a run. Yeah, my pad like on one hand and foot on the other. Yeah, it's, it's not like that. It's, you, have, you do have to have balance. You can't just work all of the time. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So you have to, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to have half an hour a day to do my socials because it doesn't work. You've got to do it in the morning and sometimes I find the best time to put something on Instagram for me is about half past six in the morning. You get, I get more results at half past six in the morning fobbing on through the day than if I did it last thing at night or midday. So you have to think about different um, uh, times of the day. You can go onto your analytics and see when people have seen your ad with the most on whatever day it was. It's like uploading to YouTube. Normally it's about half past one, two o'clock on the Monday afternoon is the best time to put something on YouTube because people then will look at it. It peters off then as the week uh, the week goes on. Uh, so yes, yeah, so and Louise comes on then at lunchtime. She comes on then at, at, in, in the uh, late afternoon. It is constantly looking at social media all the time. Whether that's just does Pinterest class as social media? I don't bother with Pinterest we anymore. Don't. It's gone a bit too. Mm, yeah. I don't know, but um, don't know. Mm, it's not no. like it's not like it used to be. No, it used to be fun. Now yeah. it's now, now it's, it's just selling. Yeah, all yeah. the time. So we don't do that, do we? Really? So yeah. So we, you know, Twitter. Oh, I do find Twitter very, very hard and very limiting. So we, we're Instagram and Facebook, aren't we? Really? I, I don't know personally. I just think it lends itself more to what we do. Yes. Instagram, Facebook, it's yes. just more visual, isn't it? Yeah. So, but I'm not, that's not saying mm. it, the Twitter doesn't work. I just, I just don't, I can't get on board with it. I never no, have been. You but don't, it's, you don't it's, tweet. People just, like Caitlin will go on your daughter, won't she? And she does commenting for ice hockey and she will just like update, 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 update on. Mm. And I think it works great for that sort of thing, but yes. maybe not. Like a, like a Twitter feed. Not for me anyway. I'm not saying it, it wouldn't work yeah. for anyone, but um, yeah. Mm. Be interesting to hear what people what people think about about Twitter. I mm. know it, it, it's easy, easier to sell because obviously now Instagram is, is is Facebook or Meta or whatever you want to call them. So you can cross reference, you can add products, tag products, which really does help. I'm sp I'm sure you can add links into Twitter, but it's not the same. And it's so easy now. I don't know. Well, I don't know whether you should do this. Some people say you shouldn't do this, but you can post to Instagram and Facebook simultaneously because they're the same company. Yes. But some people say that your, twi your um, Instagram audience are going to be different to your Facebook audience, so you shouldn't serve them the same information. Yes, but then also what I found is that when you post something on Instagram and you've tagged a product, do you want to share it to Facebook? You go, oh, yeah, I'll share it to Facebook. Might as well, yeah. That's going to save me time. But then you go on Facebook and the, the, the amount of views it has is rubbish because mm -hmm. Facebook has seen your advertising, you've got links on it, and it penalises you for that. Yeah. So what I tend to do is do the same image on Facebook without a link, so that gets good results, and then perhaps in the comment section underneath, then I would then put a link to the product that I'm doing, and I find that gets better results. But yeah. oh, it is an absolute minefield, isn't it? But yeah, we do check, like I tend to go on there in the morning at lunchtime, but if I don't, if I don't for whatever reason, if I just, I don't know, wake up late or don't feel like it, I don't beat myself up over it, I just, no. I just crack on with my day. So don't get really bogged down in it and, and make it a massive chore, because just do it when you feel like you want to do it. And if there's a specific time of day you feel like you can do it, then just do it then. Mm. Because it's better exactly. to do that than like follow all the science and go, most people will see it at this time. I don't know, because you, you do that, don't you? You'll mm. optimise your posts, which is great. And if you, mm. if that works for you, then brilliant, all the better. But mm. for me, I just... Because you be able to schedule posts. Yeah, but that's then, another great thing. But then thing. The, the APIs don't work then sometimes and Instagram uh, changes it and you can't do it. Yeah, so. I know it works on Facebook quite well, which I've done in the past. But yeah. for me, it's just got to be... On the fly, usually. <laughs> when I do, I mean, I plan a lot of it, or which is great. Bed, yeah, yeah, I plan a lot of it, but um, yeah, most of it, a lot of it's on the fly. When I think of something, I can go, oh, I'll see something in the news. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so we should leave it at that, shall we? I think we should leave it at that. Have we finished the heart pendants? No, they're still here. I do have actually. I have cut them off, so I'm halfway oh, halfway the getting there. The do you mean the Lacroix um, inspired? Oh, the Lacroix ones. Pendant. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what's been finished. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'll that's all done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's been around Louise's neck I'll win it next quite a week, few times. I? Yeah, that's yeah. all been sorted out. It's yes. lush. It is. 
It Absolutely is nice. gorgeous, yeah. Uh, all right, so that's it. Us about it. I think that's all we're going to do for today. Now, don't forget, next week we're going to have a Q and A, but at half past five after the Q and A, um, it's not. It's not going to be on the same channel. It's going to be um, an unlisted broadcast, and only uh, paid members of At the Bench will have access to it. And also, if you bought a ticket for the Sandcast in last week, you will get notification of where to go. To view it. So if you're not a paid member, you won't be able to have a have access to this. It's only for paid members and people who bought tickets last time. Mm-hmm. And we were doing more sandcast, and don't forget, then you can get Louise's email address upon on top of there and just to message her to let us know what you want us to do to show. Uh, yes, Lara, thank you very much. Yes, stick your thumbs up. Um, not no, not just don't think but no. <laughs> But just go down by there and then click like. Would uh, totally appreciate it. <laughs> Stick a thumb <laughs> It's magic. Remember that? What was that? That was Heartbeat, wasn't it? Burned, um, what's his name? Manning? No, Manning. What's his name? Anyway, that's beside the point. Okay, okay. I'm wafting. <laughs> uh, that's it. Everyone. Not like you. No, I didn't waffle. Yeah. Um, thank you for everyone who's come on today. Really do appreciate it. You okay, Lennon? I've put my hand in some Dove clays on my face. No, you're right. <laughs> so that's it. Take care, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your week. Q&A next Monday and also a workshop for after Monday. Thank you very much indeed for that. Appreciating the Kaizen approach to Andrew. I have no idea what that is, but thank you very much I've for that. i Have you? Yeah. Well done. It's so intelligent, really. So intelligent. <laughs> Uh, hopefully the sound is better and hopefully the next workshop will be absolutely brilliant when it comes to the visual and audio. So everyone take care, enjoy the rest of your week. Don't forget those little um, handheld cracker thingies, you can get them on the At The Bench store. That's at thebench.store. Uh, over to a 20 quick yeah, mask. Anyway, Louise, let's have a... You were going to say another question then, weren't you? A fade to black, shall we? <laughs> so let's have a fade to black. Uh, so Louise, say goodbye, Louise. Goodbye. I hope the sound is better for you guys this week. Everyone take care. Enjoy the rest of your week. We will see you next Monday for Q&A and also a little bit after that for the next freebie workshop. Everyone take care. Enjoy the rest of the week.